on the she was answering the phone. Yes, I was. I was texting her. She answered oh the phone. Oh my God! Yes, I was. I had to pop that up over there just to get my son out the um environment. And she gets up and walks to the kitchen, and she's in the kitchen for like maybe 10, 15 minutes. She's supposed to come back already. I walk around to the kitchen, and she's down there standing in between this guy's legs. We were just friends. It was like a sexual friendship that we had for so many years. Oh, and was he having away. a girlfriend? He had a girlfriend. Yeah. I know his girlfriend. No matter who we were with, we still had sexual relations. We have got love triangles, best friends turned frenemies, and an outlandish paternity revelation in store here. Hold on to your DNA swabs, because things were about to get wild as Mr. Pace denied being the father of Ms. Fobbs' baby because of a certain best friend. Here we go. Mr. Pace, you say you will be crushed today if DNA results reveal you are not the biological father of your son, Prince. Yes, Your Honor. You maintain that the defendant betrayed you by cheating with Prince's second possible father, your best friend. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Fobbs, you say you were caught between the man you're in love with and his best friend. Yes, Your Honor. So, how did these guys meet? Well, it was a hot summer day, and Ms. Pace's short shorts caught Daddy's eye. Shortly after that, they moved in with Mr. Randolph, his bestie, and things started to unravel. Well, that's one way to put it. Though Mama claimed it was a big mistake, the damage was done. Well, we met uh, while I was actually driving. Uh, it was a hot day. Uh, she had on short shorts on my leg, man. Um, <laughs> Okay. So I pulled over, actually, and we got a, had a conversation. I ended up getting her phone number. We went out on a few dates. We kind of bonded real quick. Moving on, the baby mama announced she's pregnant. Sadly, the lovey-dovey scene turned sour after a heated argument. Why, you ask? Well, that's what happens when trust issues and feelings of neglect creep in. Daddy found out the hard way that his BFF might be the dad, no less. Oh, the betrayal. At times, but not at the time that the situation occurred, no. So, Mr. Pace, how did you find out that she slept with your best friend? Well, that's interesting. Uh, we were actually in a heated argument at the time that it occurred, but it kind of just got blurted out to me that Mr. Randolph could be a potential father. Mr. Randolph had the stage next to answer the most burning question. How could he sleep with his best friend's girl? And his answer, well, it just happened. Right like that was enough to erase the sting of betrayal. The plaintiff didn't think so. Well, uh, to answer that, Your Honor, uh, I wasn't in the right state of mind. We both was intoxicated. He was out promoting clubs, and she used to come home from the club intoxicated and, you know, looking for him. He's not there. Me and her talk and talk, and one night the talk led to something else. So, these guys kept saying it was a one-time fling, but Mr. Pace wasn't buying that, as even one was one too many for him. This whole situation laid heavily on the baby mama, too, as both men compared their features with baby Prince. The suspense was real, but so were the trust issues. It's really hard for me to be standing here and in front of you, and I'm kind of nervous as far as what I'm about to hear. I just, I don't know, really want to move forward with I a positive outlook. I understand. So, Mr. Randolph, you submitted to the court a childhood photo of yourself and Prince. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Fobbs wanted the whole ordeal to be over with, as the repercussions were devastating, to say the least, and she didn't want her kid to pay the price for that. On the other hand, the best friends managed to salvage what was left of their friendship. Oh, what a mess, right? I want him to grow up better than I did. I didn't have a dad in my life, so I'm not justifying that, using that as an excuse, because I did do wrong, and um, I just feel like he doesn't deserve it. Is Mr. Pace the only person that stepped up and really been a father to him, or has Mr. Randolph helped as well? No, Sam is not in Prince's life. It was pretty obvious. Baby mama and daddy still cared about each other, but the doubts were still gnawing at them. So much so, Mr. Pace didn't leave these two alone anymore. I would say, good thinking, man. When you're caught between two people that you care about, the relationship- Why do you feel caught between them? Because it's over. There's no relationship, they say. Well, you, but you still have doubts. I, like I say, I see this man on a, on a daily basis as well as I see her on a daily basis. So when you have a small thought in the back of your head that this may have occurred and you don't have the initial proof to find out. Well, the fate of the little prince was hanging in the balance. Not for long, though, because DNA diagnostics had done its magic once again. Yep, the judge had the four results. Would this manage to overcome this mistake? Or was there another twist waiting for them? Mr. Pace, you are not his father. <laughs> Mr. Randolph, you are not. 
Miss Fobbs? I don't know what to say. Do you know who Prince's father is? No. That's me. A love story that turned into a ghostly mystery, where a woman was claiming a supernatural twist to parenthood. Buckle up, folks. This one's about to get weirder with each passing minute. Miss Shimolinsky, you say you had a loving five-year relationship with the defendant's son, Georgie, who unfortunately died in a motorcycle accident. You claim the defendants initially accepted your son, Xavier, but now need proof that they are Xavier's grandparents. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Miss Stephanie claimed she had been involved with the deceased for five long years, and yet the Browns had never heard of her. So much so, they got to know about her after the funeral, and these guys weren't romantically involved, just friends with a lot of benefits. Take me to the day you found out Georgie passed. I was devastated, heartbroken, confused. But why? I just, I, I just make me understand one thing. Why didn't I know about you? I don't understand why you didn't know about me either. Okay, that's not an answer. Five-year relationship. Why don't I know about you? Never heard of her. I've never seen you in my house. It appears never hearing of the baby mama made the defendant skeptical, so she gets caught in the crossfire of the hurtful jabs because after two years, a friend of Ms. Brown brought a rumor to her attention. You can pretty much guess who it was about. Basically, we found out when he uh, he sent he actually sent me a picture or a text message when I was talking to him one time, and he sent me a picture and he said, um, Dad, what do you think? This could be my kid. And I, and I told him at that time that, you know, I really couldn't tell from the picture. How old was Xavier when you got that text? A year old, because he, um, he came to me also. Well, the air was thick with accusations, leaving Miss C in a puddle of tears. She claimed she and Georgie decided to take a home DNA test, but had no funds, and then he passed away. Bummer. But it did bring forth the fact that he, too, had doubts about the paternity. George, she wants it to be Georgie. He and Georgie was doing a home DNA test a couple months before he had passed, and we couldn't come up with the money. So after, I think it was like five months, but yeah, then he had passed away. So then you that's came when to I went me. to the you funeral. You came to me then. How old was Xavier when Georgie died? He was two weeks before he turned one. Okay. Enter the conception chaos as the baby mama accepts that there could be one other possibility. Though grandma wasn't falling for that. She thought there was more than one. So where was this other guy then? Tried to figure out the timeline and tried to execute a test to get the answer. Right. Unfortunately, due to his untimely death and the fact that the specimen had expired, you were unable to complete that test. Right. Yes, yeah. He took the initiative as a young black man, which usually would run the other way, you know, and took the initiative and wanted to find out if this baby was his. It appears three years have passed. Baby mama never went for the test, all because she claimed Georgie promised to be in the kid's life no matter the results. And that made grandma doubt even more because she was the one who pushed for the test. Why the secrecy, Mrs. C? Well, you can't delusion yourself. Georgie was popular. I'm gonna tell you like it is. Very Georgie popular. was very popular. He and a, a good, lot of women wouldn't person. mind having Georgie's baby. He's not here to defend himself as far as saying, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. How many other women could have said the same thing? It could, you know, so. I'm here. I'm here to find out. Well, the harsh reality of uncertain paternity was about to become even harsher and a bit weird. The baby mama submitted a video claiming she saw a cloud of smoke swirling around her son that she claimed was the deceased spirit. Now that's something, isn't it? The Browns had a hard time grasping that testimony. You find I didn't this have out. Money to come up with all that money for the test. But you never. It's not all about. You never asked. Out. That's what I'm saying. Okay. What about the video? The video, the spirit video. What about the video? I wonder what, what about the video. What do you mean video? Yeah, what the video? video you showed me. With all emotional, all right. it's just so now wondering. tell me about, about this video you mentioned. This video is when me and my friends were sitting in the car. Hold your breath, because the moment was here. The results could either redefine family ties or reopen old wounds in an outlandish way. Time to find out which way it goes. Shimalinski is zero percent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so very sorry. I'm sorry, Georgie. In a world where love meets lies, we have a couple ready to get married and run off in the sunset, only to be stopped by the groom as he called off the wedding. Why? Because of all the rumors going around about his bride, and that too for five years. What are we waiting for, huh? Let's dive right in. Ms. Davies, you say that after being with Mr. Hunter for five years, he's now given into lies and rumors about your past, scrapped your wedding plans, and is now denying your son, Jaden. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Hunter, 
Hunter, you say you've never fully accepted that Jaden is your son because Ms. Davies has a questionable past. In fact, our tale began with Ms. Davies and Mr. Hunter, a duo who once danced in the reign of love. But hold your roses just yet, because their romance turned sour soon after both of them started accusing each other of cheating and whatnot. Yep, both were holding the other responsible for ruining their relationship. Imagine that. Things I've seen, I don't, I don't really trust the things she do. I've seen too much to keep going on with this, so I have to make sure that this child is mine. So this was once a very happy relationship, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Take me back. Well, Your Honor, we met like five and a half years ago through a mutual friend. I would say that we were happy when we first got together. As the drama unfolds further, baby mama accepted she indulged in another man and threw caution to the wind as well. So when the pregnancy news got announced, the baby daddy obviously did not jump with joy. Oh, he was doubtful. And I decided to go out and talk to someone else. Now, once you did that, what happened? Well, once I did, I briefly had a relationship with the guy. We were... We were sexually together a few times. Did you use Watch protection? Watch it with me. A couple times we did not, Your Honor. Moving on, it appears Mr. Hunter was drowning in a sea of reservations when it came to the baby mama right around the time of conception. He got to know through a friend that mama was having some real fun with guys at parties. And her reaction to these allegations? Oh, she just stood there smirking, no less. When she told you she was pregnant, did she tell you she was 100% sure? Yes. So what were you basing this doubt on? Rumors and things that I heard and seen myself. What kind of rumors? Like, people tell me that they, she be hanging out, hopping in and out of cars, you know what I mean? My, I had a friend that told me they went to a party one time and she hooked up with some guy at the party. So the accusations of partying weren't enough. Nope, there was more where that came from. One fateful evening, when baby mama thought the defendant was out of the house, she called over two of her friends. What for? Um, let me put it this way. For fun times, had she not been caught by him like a deer in headlights? I'm at her house, right? She let me stay over her house. I had been drinking, so I wanted to go lay down, right? I accidentally fall asleep longer than I'm supposed to, so she's thinking I'm gone. She brings another guy and another girl upstairs into the room. While what? I'm in there. So then she makes me leave. Now, while supposed baby daddy was busy throwing shade at mommy left and right, oh, he was no saint either. It seems they both were doing all that to hurt each other or whatever else these guys wanted. Meanwhile, Mr. Hunter had another such incident to share, but the judge was on to him too. So I Seems felt like that you are I wanted going to on. step out and have fun too because he was doing it also. He didn't get pregnant. You did. You're right. And that's why we're here. You're right. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to say it's a double standard, but really it's just biology. It's how we made. We get pregnant, we carry the children, and we often carry the burden. Right. So they both had not been faithful with each other, and poor baby Jaden was now right in the middle of all this. It got to the point where the baby daddy had little to no bond with him and didn't come to his birthday party while staying late out of the house till percent in the morning. Oh, something was up with this dude too. What is Jaden's relationship like with Mr. Hunter? He's present in the home, but he does not physically interact with Jaden. Really? Yes, Your Honor. We just had a birthday party for Jaden. Devon didn't show up. Why didn't you show up to the child's birthday party, Mr. Hunter? Cause she gonna start tripping on me and all kind of stuff. Cause we weren't, like at that time, she was mad at me anyway. Next up, baby mama came with some pieces of evidence to prove her point, that her baby was indeed Mr. Hunter's. It seems the hair texture along with the height and the placement of their feet strongly suggested to her that Mr. Hunter was the baby daddy. Only question though, was that convincing enough? My hair is nothing like that. My hair is nappy. I need a perm. Can I just say, both of their hair look a mess, but I'm gonna give the baby a pass. <laughs> All right. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> I was getting mine done, Your Honor. Uh, and I understand you're looking at texture of hair. Don't say good hair, baby. All hair, if you have some, is good. All right. The wedding was at stake. The relationship along with everything else seemed to be relying heavily on the outcome of the results. The atmosphere could not be thick with tension as Lauren Lake delivered the final verdict. Mr. Hunter, you are not the father. I told you. I'm very told sorry. <laughs> Ms. Davies, are we to assume that this other gentleman 
Is Jaden's biological father the one you spoke about in your testimony, or is there someone else? Ms. Herod was in the court claiming the deceased Justin fathered her daughter during a torrid love affair, and Mrs. Walter was having a hard time wrapping her head around that testimony. Strap yourselves in as we dive into the scandalous depths of paternity doubts and family secrets. Herod, you have summoned the defendants to court today to prove that their deceased son, Justin, fathered your three-year-old daughter, Star, during a torrid love affair. You are hoping today's results seal your case. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So it's a love affair gone wrong, huh? While the defendant had heard of her and the baby, Ms. Herod and Justin, the late Romeo, connected while she was juggling not one, but two love interests. The dynamics, you ask? Let's just say complicated with a large side of messiness. Well, my son had mentioned that he may have a child and that they was gonna do a DNA, but then he said that she moved moved away and he went his own way and they never did find out anything else about it. But um, I met Star and, and Jessica about three months ago, I guess. And Star's three years old. Yes. Well, the questionable choices took a whole new turn when the baby decided to keep her pregnancy under wraps. Wait, that's not it. She shared the jolly news with the baby daddy later. And that, of course, left him with no choice but to navigate this relationship maze. Did he do that? Well, we shall see. So you thought you had the flu. Yes. But really, you were pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. And so once you found out you were pregnant, what did you do? Who did you tell? At that point in time, I told the dude that I had just broke up with. So did you ever tell Justin? Not at first I did it. I, I was about halfway through the pregnancy. Moving on, the plaintiff recalled the time Justin met the baby and supposedly his fatherly radar went cuckoo. She claimed he felt like she belonged to him, yet the doubts preyed on their minds. And that brought her here after all this time. Better late than never, right? A couple times about him being in the relationship, he said, but it was kind of complicated. And then he, he had mentioned that there, there may be a baby. He's pretty sure that he's gonna be a daddy. But then, like I said, he, he passed away and we never got to find out. Did Justin ever have a chance to meet Star before his passing? Yeah. Miss Walter had already lost her son and this possibility seemed to be the last connection she could have with him. And her grandma instinct pointed her towards that possibility too, as she reminisced the time she met baby Star and fell in love with her. I sit down beside her and she let me hold her and everything and it's just like I could feel could feel my son, but I didn't know if it was just me wanting to be a grandma. But she's so adorable and she won my heart that night. <laughs> we had a cookout and we played and talked and I gave her some candy and different stuff. And... Next up, we get side-by-side -side pictures of Justin and Star. And boy, are they really strikingly similar. No wonder grandma couldn't help herself and fell for the baby girl. But in hindsight, that just made the result all the more ominous. And when you look at those pictures, you see a resemblance? Yeah, I do. There, you can see it, is a striking similar <laughs> appearance between Star and Justin. Wow, I see a lot of side-by-sides in this courtroom. Yes. When you described how you felt when you held her, I can imagine looking at a picture like that. Ms. Herod brought in the conception calendar next in hopes of making more sense of this mess paternity situation they had on their hands. And the chances were still 50-50 on that one between two possibilities. So what hope did these guys have in the end? The months of July and August and June are well within the time frame Yes, Your Honor. Where Star was conceived if her birth date is on April 27th. Yes, Your Honor. Now I need to ask you a difficult question, but I need to know this. Yes. Were you also intimate with your boyfriend at the time? It was very seldom, but yes, we were. Will Baby Star find her biological roots? Or was this just another heart-wrenching twist in this saga? Brace yourselves for the ultimate revelation and let the dramatic drums of uncertainty roll. Here goes nothing. Between Mr. and Mrs. Walther and Star McKinney is 0.05% <laughs> You are not related. I'm so very sorry. 
with unsure paternity, pawned rings, and wedding cancellations. Buckle up for a thrilling ride, because Ms. Russell accused the daddy of denying her kid, and Mr. Shepard accused her of cheating. Judge Lauren Lake stepped in, but can she untangle this web of relationship chaos? We shall see. Ms. Russell, you claim that Mr. Shepard has been denying the paternity of your 10-month-old daughter, Armani. You say he even took back your engagement ring, pawned it, and called off your wedding. You have petitioned the court for a paternity test to prove to him that he is indeed the father of your daughter. So, right off the bat, Tay Defendant accused the plaintiff of cheating, and that too based on a store run that lasted an unacceptable hour and 30 minutes. I wish he had more evidence than just this for his testimony. But, following that, accusations fly, bags get packed, and relationships hit a big speed bump. He's fine. You plan to kick Ms. Russell, her mother, and her baby out of the home you all share for good. That's right, Yana. And you have also petitioned the court to order Ms. Russell to take a lie detector test to prove whether or not she has been faithful to you. Yes, yes, Yana. All right, now, Ms. Russell, why exactly did Mr. Shepard call off your engagement? Because he controlled it. It appears an alleged best friend spilled the tea about cheating suspicions that eventually led to these guys breaking up. Or so the potential baby daddy claimed what happened, but the other party wasn't buying it. So defensive, she started That's packing her bags and took my son with her to her cousin's house. That's and lie. then in her cousin's house, a lot of stuff going over there. So until, wait, 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 wait. Until that time, until the day she decided to go to the store, you all were a happy couple? No, yes. no, no, yes. no, no. Before that, she went like, we was going to AutoZone. So the best friend ended up being a real in the side of the baby daddy. Oh, he suspected these guys had been up to no good behind his back, but Ms. Russell was denying all of it, and so she didn't take any of his calls after just leaving like that. Not for long, though. Ma'am, I'm positive. Take me a little me, further I than it should go. I never left with my best friend. Never. Okay. Never. He he had a girlfriend the whole time. Me and him been best friends. I mean, Your Honor, like I told you, I've been so knowing him since I was 21. So why was he all up in your mix? Because he was the only one that was he there for me. He call. He, he was the only one that, like, the him and his family text, was my best. Moving on, these guys brought in the big Big guns next. Yep, witnesses. And not just any witnesses, mothers. But there was a twist. Oh, this was interesting. As Ms. Russell's mother stood next to the defendant and called her own daughter a cheater and a liar. Ouch! In the yellow are the date that Ms. Russell had left the house. So as we can see, child's birthday is in late September, counting back. That is the approximate time of conception for which four solo you days even having sex, so you I weren't know I'm home. Not yes, Your Honor. You weren't home. So, Mr. Shepard, this is the core of your doubt. Yes. Oh, that must have been painful to hear, right? Your own mother was against you. But wait, because it appears Mr. Shepard's mother was supporting the baby mama. Yeah, she claimed that the baby was his, and the baby daddy did not like his mother standing all the way over there. I don't like Ernest, no way, because I think she I could like do you better. I, I like think you she could do better. Mama. Hold on, hold on, now, don't make your witness man, tell. Mr. Shepard. That's not smart. That's not smart. Now, She's gonna say Russell, she don't like me. Hold on one second. You don't care for the relationship. No, I don't. But she over no, on I side. don't. So is there any chance that your testimony could be based on the fact that... Rewinding to the time when the ring incident happened, well, it happened when the baby was born, and baby daddy not just denied her, didn't even look at her, and asked the mama to ring up the real dude. And then he proceeded to snatch the ring. Well, that got out of hand quick. That ain't my baby. Call your husband and tell your husband y'all just had a little girl. Where's your husband? <laughs> I could have sworn he supposed to be my husband. A best friend or somebody. That's, oh, you meant the best friend. friend. No, I ain't yeah. meet him. They don't, he don't want to see me. After that, we go back home. It's constantly, that's not my baby, that's not my baby. I go into labor. Now, Mr. Shepard demanded a lie detector test with the DNA test as well. So, drum roll, please, because the results were in and the truth was ready to emerge. Let's see whether the baby mama managed to pass this test with flying colors or not? Ms. Russell, you were asked, did you ever have sexual intercourse with your male best friend? You answered, no. The lie detector determined you were telling the truth. Hmm. Whoop, there it is. Well, the tension reached its peak after those results. But hold on, folks, because we still had one more to go. Yep, baby Armani's paternity was still hanging in balance. Time to address the doubts of the baby daddy and nip it in the bud once and for all. Mr. Shepard, you are the father. 
How do you feel? I mean, I feel good about that. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that was what I was concerned good. about. That's my daughter now. But since that's my daughter, I'm going to take care of her. Like, good. I take care of my son. So, you know, ain't no problem with that. But with her, I don't know. 